Uh, for sale? Oh yeah, huh? yeah. I've got the showroom back here, and, and y'all are y'all are welcome. We we've added we've added on to the shop. That is gorgeous. Uh, this section used to be our showroom, and we had a horrible time keeping everything clean. And so when they put the container back here, we got half of it for a showroom, and we spent all last winter building the container to be the showroom, and then setting it up. And it was a it was actually a foot race trying to get everything put together um, but we got it all done you know and it turned out pretty nice I still love metalworking I still love blacksmithing I'm going to continue to do it but I'm about to turn 63 and for some of y'all you're going oh he's a young man possibly but for uh, <laughs> but but for me it's it's getting to a point where it's hard to do a lot of the stuff I used to do my check engine lights come on a couple of times and I've got some health issues that I'm dealing with even today and I'm just like eh, you know what I need to slow down so what's nice about doing this is that my copper shop is set up in my old house I have on the property we're in a newer house now and so I put my copper shop in the living room of the old house so now I can work in the air conditioning when I need to or I can work in the central heat when I need to but I don't have to be out in a hot or a freezing cold shop to do my work. There you go. So if I'm having a bad, bad weather day, it's 23 degrees outside, I don't want to be in the blacksmith shop, imagine that. And I do this full time, I do metalworking full time for a living. So I need to be producing something all the time. I can't, I can't be sitting there watching movies on, on 27 or whatever, I gotta be working. Can and, I ask uh, a question? Do, yeah. you, do you stamp it out first, a pattern? I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm get sorry. to that. No, 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 you're good. I'm excited. Well, I think yeah, it's no, it, it, yeah, it is. It's gorgeous. The first time I saw it was a year ago, almost exactly a year ago, and I saw this guy. Imagine I'm on YouTube chasing metalworking videos, and this guy shows up playing painting copper, and he's making clock faces with the patterns, and I went, and he's got a lazy Susan and a deal, and he's spinning this thing, and he's putting his torch to the copper and I thought man that's cool and I thought well I've got a I've got some copper and a plasma table which is what I used to cut my and I went and cut a six inch circle and I've got a little deal and I put a piece of channel iron on it so I wouldn't burn up the wood on the lazy Susan and I put the channel iron on there and I laid the deal on there and I heated it all up and I went back and I did what he did and I went oh, it works <laughs> and it was no and it was really you know I, the first time you do something like you've seen it done and you go oh man that works that's so cool and so I did it and, and I and oh I didn't know what I was doing I didn't know why it was working I didn't know how I was getting what I was getting I got lucky boy did I get lucky and I got this really nice pattern on the on the copper and I showed it around posted it on Facebook and everybody, oh that's right you know okay cool maybe this is something that I might want to try to do. And the more I researched and the more and then I found these people. The guy's name is Skip Matthews. They're in uh, Mountain View, Arkansas at the Ozark Mountain Folk Center. I've been there. And, <laughs> and they, they call themselves the Copper Colorist and they give lessons. It's $500 a head for a two-day class and if this is what you want to do, this then that kind of weeds out the one of these. I'd like to do it, you know. So I would like to teach at some point, but they've already told me, you'll have to be doing this for about a year and a half before you can, we'll certify you to teach our process. I said, okay, that's fine, yeah, I can wait. So what I'm gonna give y'all today is a demo of kind of how to do it, and then if you, one of y'all wants to come up, and, or if y'all want to come up and just try a few touches of the torch and see how it works and how it runs, and I'll certainly let you do that. <laughs> when I get a piece, I gotta, I gotta cut it out. You know, I cut it out on my plasma table. And mostly, I use 16 ounce copper. So 16 ounce copper is 16 ounces per 12 by 12 per square foot. Is is a pound of copper. Copper's not cheap. 
Mm. Oh boy, is copper not cheap. I bought two foot by three foot sheets. I bought two 16 ounce and one 32 ounce and it was $240 <gasps> for that amount of copper. Now that lasted a long time and it gave me a lot of product. I was able to get a lot of product from it. And I even used my scrap, I cut it up. You can cut 16 ounce copper with a cheap pair of scissors. Okay, don't use, if you get the good fist sewing scissors or whatever, they don't cut some of it. The cheap ones from the Walmart, <laughs> really, they cut the mess. And so you can actually cut something out. You don't have to have a plasma table to get your shape. You can draw it out. You can cut it with the torch, just cut outside your line and then you're gonna grind or sand to your, to your line and then, you know. And you go through about seven steps of cleaning the copper to get it clean enough to do this. If there's any trash on it at all, you're not going to be happy. You're not going to have something that you can sell. Um, Probably even like a fingerprint. If, yeah. <laughs> if you put your finger on it and then you go to uh, anneal the piece, uh, it's going to come out. Uh, that part will just color different from the rest. And uh, so you want to... You want to be handling it by the edges as much as you can. Um, and, I, and oxygen is, what we're coloring with basically is, is hot air. And everybody that looks at my copper that doesn't know what I'm doing says, oh, are you using an airbrush? No, I'm using a torch. They don't understand what that means. And, and so I'm like, I'm like, well, okay. And so when I if, I, if I don't seal it with paint, with clear coat, it's going to start to turn brown again like a penny does. And you're going to lose your pattern. So you have to shoot it with clear. I pre-prepared several pieces, one or two for me to do to show y'all some things, and the rest for y'all to play with if you want to. So it's, it's there if you want to do it. But I put them in my vacuum sealer to keep the oxygen away uh, and the other thing you'll see that I've done is I've attached a piece of wire to the back of it to hold it by now if I'm holding this in my hand and start heating up this copper boy it's going to travel like crazy and you won't be holding it long and uh, so what you'll see is I'll be using the vice grips with the insulated handles <laughs> to hold that wire. And that's how I'm going to hold that piece and, and be able to work it with the torch. Now I'm using propane and acetylene to do the work. And the torch I'm using, this is a J20 torch handle. It's a Victor. You can get them on Amazon for about 300 and something dollars for this little part here. Wow. Okay, that's $300. You can get on CyberWeld online, they're in, out of Phoenix. You can buy this same torch handle for 215. Y'all put your money where you want. <laughs> but I, I buy from CyberWeld. <clears throat> the other thing that you cannot do when you're doing this and you're attaching this wire to the back of the piece don't use silver solder. You're going to get this piece hotter than that silver solder will take and you'll lose your joint. This is a 0% silver. It's copper and phosphorus. So it's 96% uh, it's copper and 4% phosphorus. Uh, when you clean it, it actually comes out looking like uh, copper, you know. so. It's kind of hard to tell. It, get, it gives more of a silver sheen when you actually grind it away and brush it and polish it. Uh, on the back, you can see here, it looks more like a little silver knot there on the back of the, the piece. And, and that's the solder and the, the wire that I was holding it by. And so I grind it down, then I clean up the back because I don't like to leave it, you know, nasty. So that's how I get to where I'm going to start. After I do the initial annealing on it, I put it in a, uh, a pickle. We're talking about a pickle a while ago. 
and I pickle it and get all the mill scale and everything off. And then I go through about, I guess from the time I get the sheet of copper to the time I'm ready to actually paint something, I go through about seven or eight steps of cleaning and scrubbing and polishing the copper to get it where I need it to be, to get it to where I've got that bright copper finish. And, uh, and I guess you all can see that okay from over there. So I'm gonna fire up this torch and I'm gonna show y'all kind of the process. And I, I would love to give details about all of the steps of getting there, but I don't wanna, if y'all decide to take the class from Skip, I don't wanna take away from them. I'm not certified to teach yet, although I'm, they saw a demo I did on uh, YouTube that my son shot for me. It's my son Aaron, he's oh, taking yeah. pictures today. And uh, he shot a video of me doing a demo that I'm gonna give y'all. And uh, the people that gave me the lesson said, man, it's a great demo. And then the, I, when I talked to them on the phone, they said, you might certify a little quicker than a year and a half. <laughs> oh, good, well, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> so I am using propane. And, and oxygen, and uh, you notice I only do a quarter turn on my propane. Uh, if I have an accident happen and it, I were to have a fire or something, I want to do one and it's off. Uh, I had a I had an accident one time and I had the bottle full on, and the hose from the deal had burned through, and the hose is doing this like a blowtorch just you know, like a water hose wiggling at full bore. <clears throat> and I'm and I'm over there at the bottle going, don't blow up, don't blow up. It was a bad day. Oh. And I sat back in my chair going, I'm done for the day. I am so done for the day. <laughs> so, <coughs> but uh, also when you're, uh, when you're soldering on the little, the little tags on the back to hold it by, you want to hold that wire with a, pair of hemostats or, or, or just like vascular clamps, whatever you want to call them. Uh, you can buy a bunch of them, you know, on Amazon for cheap. Uh, uh, but yeah, that's the only way you're going to hold, or a pair of vice grips is to hold it up there and, and put it on. So, uh, I'm gonna pull my torch up. I love that little starter. Boy, it works cool. great. That's very cool. Morning, Chris. Hey. Beginning to wonder about you. This is Chris Sandoval. He's our uh, other blacksmith out here and resident blacksmith. Hi. How's it going? Chris, NTBA, NTBA, Chris. Hello. Hi, Hi Chris. Chris. Y'all will be dealing with him on the demo next year. Uh-huh. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be stepping back in my duties out here. So I'm gonna get my torch kind of going here. I'm running about four to five pounds of pressure on the propane, about four to five pounds of pressure on the oxygen, kind of what you'd braze at. If, if you know how to braze, then about the same settings. And uh, I'm gonna let that run for a minute. I made my little torch holder. Uh, I, I love that thing and it holds my mid gun and it holds my gas torch and it holds my TIG torch and it's just a handy little thing and I figured it out and cut one out and I've been using them all over the shop. So I want to mount one to a magnet so I can just plug it where I need it when I need it, you know, on my tables. But uh, it's a handy way to hold my torch handy. But what I have to do now is I have to anneal my copper and what I'm really looking to do when I do this is I want to take this up to the highest level of oxidation which will be, for us guys, it will be a silver gray color, okay? And I'll be almost, you'll be able to see some red in the copper as I'm working it with the torch. And, um, and for you ladies, it will almost appear brown. Y'all have more color cones and rods in your eyes than we do, so y'all see the colors differently than we do. And uh, so I always use uh, just one of the big, Cheap Harbor Freight blow torches. And we're just going to heat this up.
This one is 32 ounce copper. You see there's a little trash on it. Some dots coming up there. That's okay. John, what gauge does that translate to? What gauge does that translate to? About 14. Uh, but if you were ordering it, now get all my copper from Macquarie Metals in Dallas. Right. Over by uh, Deep Ellen, I think it is, that area. Actually, they deliver to me. So, okay. So now I'm at that silver gray color and it's tooling. And uh, I'm gonna use this uh, this fan. Watch your hand. What's he gonna do? Hit that torch. Yeah. <laughs> That's the other thing you learn real quick in this, that if you hit yourself in the hand with the torch, your life isn't over, you'll be fine. But we've all learned that from the forge anyway. So I'm going to cool that off a bit, and the 32 ounce takes longer to cool off, but you don't want to take all your heat out of it. You don't want to introduce any more humidity, and your, your colors will be, you will be a little bit bound by what's in the air. If you're going to go into the shop one day and say, oh, I want to get that same tint of turquoise I had yesterday and the pressure has changed and it's a high alert pollution day, ozone day uh, going on and the humidity change and you're not going to have the same results. So if you're looking, if you're a control freak, this is not for you. <laughs> not at all. I can feel the heat coming off of the piece in the fan and it's just now getting cool enough to where I want to be. And so, I want to put my first mark on this. I'm going to turn it up pretty good. And I'm going to come to the middle of the piece. I'm going to go off of this point to the middle of this divot here. And I'm just going to lay it sideways like that. Now you don't want the blue part of the flame to actually touch. You want this atmosphere around it, this oxygen. And you see the mark I've gotten now with that. So now I'm going to make my next mark. And then once I get going, I have to go. And so I'm going to come off at this point. And I'm going to come off at this point. So that's, that's, that's my inner start point. I'll tighten that up a little. And we're going to go to, from the middle now to the point. Just like that. And then we'll come around. We're going to make our next. Little ride the rainbow moment here. And I'm going to go to the next one on the other side. Because these colors that I'm about to draw, I knew it's about to do that. About my you can see the colors changing in the piece because I stopped. And so it's just kind of going on its own at this point. Bless you. And you see, I'm just laying the torch sideways. 
I'm not doing anything really special yet. And I'm doing each uh, section in turn. I want to keep it, I don't want it to be too hot in any one section. So I was, I'm going to come back over to this one opposite that one. And I'm going to run that torch up like that. And once I get these patterns in, then I'm going to come back on it. And we're going to heat the whole thing up. And we're going to pull our hottest colors first. And so, you have to pull your hottest colors first and work down. If you tried to do your coldest colors and work up, then what would happen is all your colors would go hot. And so you would lose whatever you were trying to get. But I want this middle to show that kind of that spiral going on there, but I want that to be a bright color. And so I'm heating up pretty good here. And so now I'm getting some blues and turquoise and yellows in it, just like that. And we're going to cool that off and stop the process before it goes back to a gray. And it, it, I have to stop at some point and get it cool so that I can run my next series of colors, which will be a little bit cooler, so I'll turn the torch down just a little. Okay. Turn that down just a little. Let that cone flare just a bit. And I'm going to come to the outside. My deepest gray that's left is my lowest point. And I have to cover all of that. So we're going to come across here. If you go real shallow with the uh, torch against the material, you get a finer line. If I go real at a harsher angle, you get a fatter line. I know what that is. I'm spitting while I talk, but I'm normally talking when I'm doing this. That's what, the, that's what that trash is, it's my spit and my apologies. I've got new teeth and I'm not used to them yet. And so, but that's okay because I'll re clean this up when I get it home and we'll do it right. And so, I'm just going around the outside. Yeah, if you mess up on a piece, is it possible to go back and start over? Re scrub, re clean. You cannot just reheat. I mean, I've done it. If I'm not too deep, I've done it. And sometimes it works, and sometimes it just comes off ugly. Okay, almost all the way around. And then, what I'll do will change. And this is a kind of a medium sized piece, if you will. Um, I've got some necklace pendants and stuff back in the showroom. And if you saw me working those, I, I, now this tip that I have on here is a, a single lock tip. I also have a double lock and a triple lock for smaller work. 
And I do a lot of smaller stuff. I do bracelets, I do necklaces, I've done earrings, I've done wall hangers. And so, I have to be real careful here. Because I'm wanting to go with the more of the purple. And I don't want it to get away from me. Because then the next step is it'll go to a dark blue and I want it to be purple. And so we're coming up. You say, okay, well now that's kind of my base, where I'm at. Now I can turn my torch down a little more, <laughs> bring my oxygen down, bring my torch down. I want to put kind of a dot here in the middle, and so I'm going to come in just And so now I put a dot in the middle of my piece, or middle ish. You're never dead on. If you are, you're like, oh, you're good. And uh, I'm going to bring the torch back up. And I'm going to come out of my dot randomly now. And make some thin lines. Call it flower petals, rays of sunshine. Whatever you want to call it. And so now we have, you know, another element. And I'm really, I'm just like, ooh, what do I want to do next? You know, I, I'm more random. My wife loves to plan every little step. You know, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and then I'll do this. Okay. And I'm over there going, let's see what happens here. You know? And sometimes I get real lucky, and sometimes I have to redo them four and five times before I get something that I like. And so we're cooling it down again. Now this copper color that I'm at, that is my coldest color. And I'm going to heat that up just a touch. And heat up my rays just a touch. And I want to kind of bring them up to a, a brown. I know I'm not showing y'all real good as I do with this. But now y'all can see, I've kind of darkened my colors a bit. And uh, so then I'm going to cool it off. And I think I'm just going to kind of put some highlights in it to give it some interest. And then I'm going to set it aside and let it, let it cool. And I'm going to do one more quick piece. I say quick, you know. Uh, and uh, I'm going to kind of go around the points and I'm just going to touch more and this is strictly for highlights Ah, dang it. You would think I'd know how to do this by now. And sometimes I do. I, I was almost nervous about doing this demo for y'all because I just haven't been doing it this long. And y'all are my first live demo, if you will. I'm not, I'm not getting to take takes and start over like we did making the video. And so... I'm just going to come down. I'm just going to put some little highlights along the edge. 
And when I get this one on, yeah, I will be scrubbing it clean and starting it over. I can come back and do uh, Okay. I stepped on my cord, that's why my torch went out. I'm going to stop the heat coloring process here. And I'll let y'all pass that around if you want. Have a look, it's dirty. I apologize. Um, yeah, it's, you get in the daylight, it really pops. These little, I got it on Amazon. Uh, they're about 50 bucks, but when you're at the jeweler's bench, they're worth their weight in gold. A couple of AA batteries in there for the piezo and, and your gold. Uh, I've got a whole grinding station I built. Uh, it's a little, little wall, two by fours and four by fours casters on all four ends, locking casters. And I have a grinder on one side with a scotch bright wheel and a belt sander, two by 48. And the other side has a, uh, a coarse grinding or coarse wire wheel and a fine wire wheel for my polishing and scrubbing, scrubbing and polishing. And so if you're taking the mill scale off with a scotch bright wheel, it's going to leave plastic on that copper that will mess with what you're doing. You have to pickle it to get that off. It will not come off in the wire wheel. And don't, if you scotch brine it, you don't go to your wire wheels because then that plastic will get on those bristles. You don't put, uh, if you're doing something in copper, that's all that ever touches that wheel or that belt. I label all of my belts copper on the inside of the belt. So if I do bring something in the copper shop that's steel, I put a steel, a belt for steel on it and do what I'm going to do and then go back out to the shop if I need that for that. Then I want another steel.